welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Alessandro, it's Berk, we, we are both uh, developers at uh, Vamp.io. Tonight we are going to talk uh, about uh, service meshes. So let's uh, first go through what we are uh, going to talk about in this presentation. We are going to first uh, introduce the concept of service mesh and define uh, what it is about. Then we are going to talk about uh, Istio, which is uh, the service mesh that uh, we choose uh, for our product. And then uh, we are going to shortly introduce uh, what we did till now on uh, our product, which is uh, Vamp Lamia. So what is a service mesh? Uh, a service mesh is a dedicated infrastructure layer for handling service-to-service -service communication. It offers uh, some features, among which uh, authentication, authorization, security, observa observability, and traffic optimization. Um, what does it mean? Uh, it means basically that uh, a, service mesh, a service mesh uh, allows you to abstract away all uh, uh, the networking layer. So as a developer, you don't need to care about uh, how your services find other services and interact with them. Uh, what are the main advantages of a service mesh? Um, it allows uh, to easily secure uh, your connections inside the cluster or outside the cluster in some cases. It grants uh, observability of services, which uh, means tracing, uh, that is uh, understanding how the services communicate with, with each other, uh, fault detection and so on. Uh, it enables greater freedom during the development because, as I said, you don't have to care about uh, how the service, services are interacting with each other. And uh, it provides uh, several features which uh, helps a lot when you're dealing with microservices uh, architectures like uh, fault injection and uh, advanced routing. Obviously, these, uh, all these good things come uh, at a price. Uh, and the most important uh, uh, price you're going to pay is uh, on the per performances uh, side. Uh, because uh, you are going to run uh, uh, definitely more uh, instances, uh, as we are going to see in the later when we look at the architecture of a service mesh. mesh. And uh, uh, you also introduce in some uh, overhead, because uh, you are going to have some proxies and the requests are going to go through them before reaching your services. Um, that is partly mitigated by the fact that uh, you can use uh, connection pools and that is also going to uh, increase the throughput, but uh, it's still a problem. And uh, the third uh, issue you're going to face with uh, service meshes is uh, that uh, they are still an immature technology, so um, documentation uh, and examples and support might be lucky. So, um, when uh, talking about architectures, uh, we have uh, two approaches. Uh, either we go with a node agent or a sidecar agent. Let's look first at uh, the node agent. So as you can see in this graph, uh, you have uh, two nodes uh, running different uh, services and uh, on each of them uh, you have uh, a proxy. That proxy is actually the node agent and um, it constitutes the data uh, plane of uh, the mesh. Uh, the data plane is basically responsible for handling all the communication between the, the services on the, inside the node and uh, from those services inside the node to the services outside the node. Uh, on top of all of this, we have uh, the control plane, uh, which is a configuration layer, basically. Uh, it contains configurations and policies uh, that are applied to the data plane. Uh, with the sidecar agent uh, architecture, uh, the main difference, the boxes are not showing, but uh, there, are, there is a box around uh, here. Um, basically, uh, on a single pod, we have uh, both uh, a service container and a sidecar container, which is the sidecar agent. It's still a proxy. So basically the model is the same, the only difference is uh, you have uh, uh, a proxy per, uh, um, per pod instead of a proxy per node. And uh, the interaction with the control plane is basically the same. 
So advantages and disadvantages of uh, these uh, two approaches. Uh, with the node agent, uh, you have uh, obviously less overhead because of uh, less instances, and uh, uh, it's uh, cheaper to scale for the same uh, reason. Uh, with the sidecar agent, conversely, you have uh, better isolation and uh, better security, and you can. Uh, it's easier to do gradual adoption because you can just uh, deploy the sidecar agents. <coughs> Whatever you want, you're not forced to go all in. And uh, now we get uh, to Istio, yeah. which I'm is the solution. Hi, I'm Berk. Um, uh, I will tell you about Istio today. Um, Istio is the main focus order, actually. The Istio is uh, Istio is a mesh, uh, service mesh that supports uh, Google. It started in Lyft, but then uh, Google take over with IBM developers. They actually in, uh, got it with interest, so that they build over uh, the project of, uh, from the Lyft. It's called Envoy. Uh, the Envoy is a proxy written in C++. Uh, they took it in and convert, uh, build Istio over it. They use a uh, extension of Envoy. Uh, Istio is uh, Istio has a different structure with other uh, service meshes uh, that it has automatic sidecar injection. It is easy to set up for the simple uh, scenarios. The cons is that it's really complex when you get into complex scenarios. It, it can really get complex. Uh, it has lots of customizations. It has configurations for everything nearly, but it has a thriving community, so it's super active right now. If you get in, that it's really uh, uh, active developing, the uh, active development. Uh, the best <laughs> worst thing is that it, there is a steep learning curve because yeah, there are lots of uh, customizations and scenarios that you can get in. Uh, yeah. The, so what is Istio? Istio is a, a uniform uniform way of. Um, uh, service mesh to integrate micro microservices man uh, to manage traffic flow across microservices and enforce policies and aggregate telemetry data. We will get into this uh, later. So, also the core features are traffic management, security, observability, platform support, integration, customization. Only thing that we are not going to get in is the platform support. Uh, Istio can be deployed onto VMs uh, directly. Uh, and bare metal also. Uh, uh, Nomad with uh, it can be uh, deployed on Nomad, but uh, we are we are going to talk about mostly on Kubernetes uh, Kubernetes support. But their main goal is the give a Kubernetes support. So this is the basic architecture of Istio. Istio directly injects. Um, before start, actually, there is a box around this. So that Istio injects their proxies directly into pods. This is actually a pod, and this is a, a container in the pod, and uh, this is the sidecar as proxy. This is Envoy, <coughs> and what happens is that uh, the Istio automatically creates a IP table forwarding, so your containers doesn't see the connection. Uh, you don't need to make any configuration on your for your container. They are automatically injected. And when service tries to connect something, it goes through the proxy, proxy forwards to the other proxy, and uh, the service B receives the package. <coughs> that this allows, uh, because all the communication is actually going through proxies, you can configure all the network. Um, currently, the uh, Istio has a pilot uh, that you can uh, make the configuration between networks. and. Uh, uh, Pilot periodically sends the configuration of the proxies. Uh, since all the network also goes through proxies, proxies uh, periodically send uh, their telemetry and policy checks to Mixer, like the number of configurations and connection pools. And there is also another feature that you can secure the, all the connections between proxies. Stadel manages this uh, certificate, uh, behaves like a certificate manager and sends their certificate and refresh their certificates periodically and that way the proxies knows each other and secures their connections with each other so that allows actually it's a nice feature for mostly security that 
uh, you can secure your connections without changing, uh, making any change to your code. Um, that uh, traffic routing. Uh, this is also uh, this is also a good feature for canonizing and main thing that WAMP try to achieve. That you can send your messages to different uh, groups, uh, groups of bots uh, with percentages weights. Uh, th before I said that you can configure everything over pilot, uh, most of the communication. So you send the rules to the pilot and pilot sends them to proxies. This is uh, also one of the things that I need to say that uh, all of the uh, configuration and load balancing are managed on the client side. The service A uh, connects to the directly to the ports of the uh, service B and uh, all of the these connections are configurations are managed by the proxy like you can set 1% go to this port which has version 2 and 90% of the um, connections will go to the version 1.5 uh, uh, yeah that's uh, so that will be managed on the client side you can manage this kind of scenarios we will get into this later also for the telemetry and checking actually this is the drawing of the same thing that all the proxies go to the uh, send their message to a service called Mixer. Mixer allows um, allows integration to other adapters that can has logging backend, uh, quota backend, authorization backend, and telemetry backend. Uh, there are integrations into Prometheus, uh, Elasticsearch over logging, or uh, for private service like Stackdriver or. CloudWatch in AWS, so that you can um, uh, integrate Mixer to them, and mix, a Mixer can uh, send logs or the quota authorizations and telemetry backend. We use this in WAMP uh, by checking the Prometheus and Elasticsearch. Uh, you can also write your own adapters. Actually, we are looking onto it, but it's uh, uh, active development that out of process adapters development. Uh, this is a uh, Istio routing example uh, that Istio has structures called gateway, virtual service, and destination rule. The service here is the standard Kubernetes service. Uh, I hope you are familiar with Kubernetes service. Um, destination rule has a um, gives us a extension to the service because normally, uh, if you use Kubernetes services, Kubernetes services has a a label structure to find the uh, applications that are rooted to, but um, we need a finer description. So destination rule can have subsets in that application, and uh, it has a load balancing configurations per port. Uh, virtual service can get uh, gets us a separation between services or subsets that uh, we can say that you send like uh, thirty percent to this service and. 50% to the C service or 30% to the, this subset and 40% to the subset that can be all configured in the virtual service. Gateway is the, as its name, uh, Gateway is a, uh, uh, sends messages from outside world into the inside of the service mesh. It can be configured per port. Also, you can uh, configure the uh, LTS traffic like HTTPS certificates in the gateway. Uh, so, yeah, you can configure the gateway for that. Oh, okay, okay we are going to demo. So, uh, One Plamian is our, uh, is the product on which uh, we have been working for uh, almost a year, I would say, right now. Uh, it's actually an internal product uh, uh, which uh, we use uh, to uh, try and showcase uh, some of the features that will be part of uh, uh, the second version of uh, VAMP. Uh, VAMP Lamia, Lamia is a modular Istio based canary release in two that uh, runs on Kubernetes and it has uh, both an API and a UI and its main goal uh, is uh, making it easy to manage uh, complex configuration uh, on Istio. So uh, we are going to show uh, a demo, and during the demo we are going to set up uh, uh, something like this, basically. Uh, as you can see, there are some, uh, uh, some elements, which are the ones uh, about uh, which 
uh, Berk was talking about. We have a gateway, a virtual service, a service a destination rule uh, over uh, a number of subsets. And uh, the sub each subset uh, has uh, its own uh, deployment, uh, which is a version, uh, a different version of the same uh, service. Um, what uh, Vamp uh, Lamia is gonna do? It's uh, it's gonna create a, a, an abstraction over this, uh, that is the Vamp service, which uh, will handle all, all of this layer uh, in a single uh, API request. So it will make it uh, way easier to create this kind of uh, architecture. After uh, setting this up, uh, we will also do a uh, small A-B testing over uh, two of the versions. So let's get to it. <laughs> So this is a Vamp Lamia interface. Uh, we have uh, already set up a few things because uh, uh, registering a new host takes a bit of time. So we created uh, the gateway and uh, a project. So we select uh, this project. Uh, we have uh, a cluster already set up. Virtual clusters are an abstraction uh, in uh, Lamia. They correspond basically to namespaces in uh, Kubernetes. So we have already, as I said, a gateway set up. This is uh, its configuration. These are uh, the name servers, and uh, this is the host name associ associated with it. And it's open on the port 80. And this is uh, its uh, IP. So we are now going to create a LAMP service. <coughs> Yeah. Here we're going to reference uh, application 1, which is uh, inside our cluster. It's uh, basically the container of uh, the deployments that we have. We are going to reference the gateway that we previously created. 9191, right? Yes, right. Okay. but the application is not the application. Ah, yeah, you're it's right. application. Yeah. Okay. Then here we are going to define the subset. And uh, we are uh, basically telling two subset. One, subset one is identified by a label uh, version <coughs> with value version one. And currently it has weight 100%. But we are going to also add the subset two. And uh, version version 2 and then we set the weights to 50 so the traffic uh, towards this uh, uh, host name will be split among the two services so we submit and we can see that uh, a service has been created with this configuration a destination rule has been created with the two subsets we defined and a virtual service has been created with uh, the, um, the weights and the destinations towards that service we created and we can actually check it yes this is uh, the page if we refresh it might change or it might yes, yes it can change Okay, so now we set up uh, all uh, the, the structure that we show, we can uh, do um, an A-B testing on it. To do that we have this uh, experiment feature. So we create a new experiment, we call it shop experiment. We reference the service we just created. We set an update time of one minute, meaning that uh, every minute it will check uh, the traffic towards uh, the, the services and decide which one uh, is better and uh, it, this step uh, value is basically the update value so every minute it will shift the weights by 10% if the results are uh, significant 
Here, uh, uh, these tags identify features that uh, distinguish the different subsets, so you can put uh, however you want, how many you want. They can, uh, in this case, it's just uh, the background color, it's blue for the first version. Uh, this card, this uh, target is a URL uh, because basically we are evaluating, uh, we are checking the number of users that go to the services and we are checking how many of the users uh, go to a certain uh, URL in that service. In this case, since it's uh, basically an e-commerce, uh, we are checking how many users go to the cart. And the same we're going to do for the second uh, version of the service, checking the same URL. That's all, yes. So it's going to set up everything. It takes a while to update the virtual service. Yes, now did it. Okay, as you can see, the configuration changed completely. Uh, basically, two other uh, services have been deployed. Uh, they are uh, cookie servers. So when a new user that doesn't have a cookie gets to the service, it will be assigned a cookie based on the weights we specified, and from then on, uh, it will go only to a specific version uh, of uh, the, the service. Uh, obviously, to get uh, any updates, we need to generate some traffic, so we have uh, created a small Node.js application that does just that. And I'm going to start it. Okay, so now requests are coming in. Uh, it takes a minute to get uh, an update. Uh, what will happen is basically, the since the, the test we are running is biased, um, towards uh, subset 1, they will shift, uh, the weight of subset 1 will increase by 10% every minute. Uh, we should be able to see the traffic, although, yes, we can see it, this is the traffic. The up updates here are very slow because uh, the time frame is uh, a bit larger than one minute. So, actually much larger, <laughs> so uh, it, it will update slowly, but uh, we should get a notification in about one minute that uh, the wait, yes, here it is, that uh, they are shifting. Uh, so basically that's it, it will uh, shift uh, until it reaches 100% uh, and then it stops, unless uh, uh, things change afterwards it will go back. Uh, but at any time we can uh, just delete the experiment uh, and the uh, wait will become uh, fixed to the current value. So basically that concludes our demo. Uh, where is the presentation now? You can actually access this URL right now, it's publicly reachable. Huh? Yeah, if you want to try it out, it's not uh, open source, but uh, at uh, this repository you, you can uh, download a copy and uh, do play around with it. And uh, we appreciate if you give us any feedback or suggestions or questions. And on that note, uh, questions. Oh, by the way, that we will give away that three t-shirts to the best questions. <laughs> so <I think laughs> Nico will choose the best questions. Right? <laughs> so you, you straight away the first two. The first three ones I would guess. Okay. <laughs> Any examples of uh, node and agent based uh, service methods? What do you mean exactly? You said there are two types of service okay. methods. Uh, ah, yeah. card and node agents. Uh, so node based uh, like uh, Linkerd. First one. And uh, sidecar uh, Linkerd2. Uh, okay. Console and Istio. So, uh, node agent uh, style, style service methods only work on like level 3, 4, right? Because Linkerd works on that level. And yes. if you want something on level 7, it's only uh, 
available through Sidecar? Mm, we can't say that. that by architecture wise, it, they can work on both. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't depend on the not uh, not version or sidecar version actually. It's more about That's where the proxy is. Needed, yes, but it can handle layer three, four, or seven at the same yeah. time. Is the same proxy just on a node or on a sidecar? Yes, uh, it doesn't. So do the proxies skip like the entire IP layer of the Kubernetes cluster yes, and set up their own little yeah. network? Set up yes, uh, in Istio it totally skips the QP proxy. It, they, all the communication goes through the, uh, its own proxies. So all the tooling that's based on that is not available to you? Yes, yes, yes that's, a, that's a problem with Istio, but it's not too much. So this includes DNS? Yes, it also skips the QP DNS. Uh, you can actually create service entries uh, if you want to create uh, new entries of service that we use in some situations. Uh, you mean that Envoy do DNS translation? No, it uses still new DNS. Yeah, exactly. It's still Cube DNS. It gets data from Cube DNS, DNS, but you can add your own uh, own service entries without using Cube DNS. But what it does okay. is use the same Cube DNS. When you put define a host and a service, and you put the server name. You just take that is in the same namespace, but you can specify service name and namespace service cluster that local or whatever. Yes. Is it possible to secure microservices using uh, Amazon ACM certificates? Yeah, I read something like yes. that, but we didn't try. <laughs> yeah, we didn't try. Uh, there is uh, the Stadel has outside integrations, the service integrations. We didn't try that, but technically it's possible. So, okay. so VAMP introduced experiments, right? Yes, That's, yes. Did you wrote a CRD for that? No. We are planning to. We were talking about it, but we don't have a CRD, a separate CRD for it. Okay. We don't need a CRD, actually. We do need CRD. Yes. Yeah, we can have it without CRD, but yes. So, because everything else is a CRD in Istio. Uh, we are managing our own system. We have a, diff a yes. separate data plane, so we don't need it. It's, we were talking that it may be easier, but we don't need it, actually. We are probably going to do it, but at the moment we are able to do it without. Yeah. Uh, you've been doing this for about nine months, Eric? Yes. yes. Um, how is your experience with the different kinds of workloads? I mean, uh, especially with the sidecars, for example, is it um, does it work very well with maybe functions as a service-based uh, type of workloads, or it's mostly like micro and bigger micro services? Yeah, we didn't so test it that way. There were some tests that uh, it it introduced all. Um, you lose some time because there it goes through two proxies instead of one. Uh, but uh, the throughput increases if you have constant connection between two services. So it's not good for function as a service. But if you have like a data connections that always have connections, the uh, connection pools increase the throughput there. Yeah, that's that's what we got. We didn't try well, by the way the function as a service or that kind of things, but I think you probably switched to like node agents instead of sidecars or something like that at least. Yeah, TLS also increases. Yeah, actually we started developing as a node agent then yeah, we wanted Yes, we totally switched. We decided that we will go with the Istio way because it has uh, it has more security connections. Yeah. Yes. You said that Istio allows you to uh, either that's the network traffic between the services. So can it be replayed to the network policy in Kubernetes, or, or, or should we still use the network policy? The ingress or ingress and the different lines. Yeah, we need to talk about this actually. Uh, Kubernetes doesn't use any ingress at all. It starts on its own. Sorry, Istio doesn't use ingress at all. They started with ingress, but they left it. They because ingress was not enough, so they do it over service. They have their own uh, deployments that manage that service. Yeah, basically so, the gateways. Yeah, gate. Uh, that's called gateways. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Istio has its own RBAC control. That's totally different that you can manage connections from this connection, 
uh, depending on connection type or get or post requests, you uh, you can manage uh, very detailed connection uh, permissions on Istio. It is much different than what Kubernetes is actually. Yes. Hey, are you doing anything with uh, circuit breakers? So um, yes, it's, it was configurable, but not. Uh, it's configurable on Istio, we don't support it yet, but uh, we will. But it's just a matter of mapping the configuration of it, but we will have it. Can you do the um, configuration? Where, where is it stored? Is it in a database or is it Yes, it's code stored in a database. Is it in, in a private yeah. database? Yeah. We currently <coughs> support MongoDB. We store in MongoDB right now, and we also has a uh, Hazelcast cache. So we store in the cache in R first, then store it regularly to the, uh, to the MongoDB. And you cannot have it in, in code somewhere, so you can reproduce what you're doing. Input um, We also use the put in annotations some of the data in annotations. Ah uh, yeah. And these are our. Contacts if you want to get in touch. <laughs> yes.